previously on the Dragon Ball Prediction. And in this video, we will talk about the Super 17 Saga returning villains that Goku and his friends defeated over the years, starting with classic Dragon Ball, the adventures of King Goku, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, to see how they will appear in the Super 17 Saga. Now that we have gone over the returning villains, next time on the Dragon Ball Marathon, we will talk about the Shadow Dragons and the final villain of Dragon Ball, Omega Shenron. Don't worry everyone, the next episode is going to come out about the Shadow Dragons and the Crack Dragon Ball. Don't forget to subscribe! And then it continues. Also, when Gabe is listening to Felicia Angeli's Supreme Kai of Time in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, she has the perfect range to do Valise compared to Amor Cotton, so either Felicia or Jade Saxton will voice Valise. Also, I mispronounced Gohan again! Oh, god damn it, Nappa! I did it again! Shit! I screwed up! Anyway, let's continue. Hi everyone! Welcome back! My name is Natalie the Life Flight, and this is my partner, Pikachu! Pikachu! And this is part 4.5 of Dragon Ball GT HD Remastered Blu-ray prediction for Funimation and Toei! In this video, we will all talk about the cracked Dragon Balls and the wishes they made that spawned the Shadow Dragons. And we will not talk about the Shadow Dragons yet, only the Earth Dragon Balls of why they were cracked and which Shenron spawned on what year the, of the Dragon Ball Age. The cracked Dragon Balls and the wishes that spawned the Shadow Dragons. There's a lot of explanation on why there are cracked Dragon Balls. In this picture, we see why we have a cracked Dragon Ball there. In Dragon Ball GT, when they have accumulated too much minus energy, the Earth Dragon Balls become the Crack Dragon Balls, dark blue in color but with black stars. Instead of Shenron, they will summon Black Smoke Shenron, who will not grant wishes but rather unleash the Seven Shadow Dragons. We will also explain the history behind the Earth Dragon Ball. The Earth Dragon Balls are about 7.5 centimeters, approximately 3 inches in diameter, and they summon a dragon named Shenron. They were created by Kami, and later recreated by Dende. Shenron can grant a wish within its powers as long as it does not create love, repeat a wish he previously granted, surpasses its creator's power, and meets a few more restrictions. Legitimate wishes include eternal youth, immortality, bringing back a scorched force, or even in an annihilated planet. One of the most common wishes is bringing a dead person back to life, although there are several limitations on that as well. For starters, as Romeo stated earlier, the dragon will not grant the same wish more than once, which has the net result of ensuring that nobody can be wished back to life more than once. And also, they cannot revive a person who has died in natural causes. Although Earth's Dragon Balls can revive multiple dead people at once when multiple people are revived, only those who have been dead for one year or less can be revived. And this is often misunderstood by fans to mean that only those who have been dead for less than a year can be revived. But that is never explicitly stated in the series. And all Tom Kami ever says is that only wishes to revive multiple people are limited to one year time frame. Indeed, this concept the misconception is finally put to rest in the Golden Frieza saga, when Frieza was restored to life when the Earth's Dragon Balls, despite Frieza being unquestionably dead longer than, than a year. It is unknown that this resurrection is still in place after Dende upgraded Shenron. In addition, when one is wished back to life, they awaken in the place where they were killed, such as the case with Bora, essentially reuniting the body with the soul. If one's body has been completely vaporized, they would come back in the last state they were alive as it was noticed by Mecha Frieza, who was revived in pieces as the last time he was alive after future, future Trunks had cut him into pieces. 
However, Frieza continued to live due to his ability to survive horrific injuries before finishing him off. It was also shown by Frieza's condition of the revived person depends on the person being revived as Frieza was revived in pieces due to him being able to live despite his entire body being cut up. If a person has been allowed to keep their body in other worlds, as with Goku, then the person would be revived in other worlds, which causes their halo to disappear, forcing them to return to the living world on their own. And however, this apparently only applies to noble souls like Goku, as evil souls like Mecha Frieza, who kept his body in Earth's hell, was revived on Earth in pieces. Though it is possible that Dende's alternations to the Dragon Balls, how resurrection functions or Frieza being revived on Earth instead of Earth's hell, was due to Shenron's interpretation of Sorbet's wish, as Sorbet wanted to restore Frieza to life, so he could restore Frieza's body using the Frieza Force's more advanced medical technology. Another restriction is that it cannot kill enemies that exceed the creator's power, and this is often misunderstood by fans to be a ban on killing villains generally, but that is not explicitly stated, and all Shenron states is that he cannot kill someone who exceeds the power of his creator. As such, this dialogue opens with the possibility for weaker villains such as Emperor Pilaf or Mercenary Tao to be killed off with a wish to the Dragon Balls. However, by the time someone had the idea to make such a wish, the villains were already more than 80 times stronger than Kami, who had a power level of only around 220, and the villains would get even stronger after that. And it should also be noted that such a wish would be unnecessary anyway as any villain Shenron could kill would also be within the creator of his power and thus Kami or Dende could easily deal with the villains themselves or seek the aid of our spiders that are stronger than like Goku, Gohan, and Piccolo who are all far, far stronger than either Kame or Dende. This would have been easily true and been true in Kami's time as Kami ex is experienced martial artist and the Dragon Balls could only grant one wish which would be far more useful in undoing the damage caused by said villains who could be easily dealt by the heroes, Kami included. It should be noted that Dende takes on a more supportive role and tends to leave the fighting to the Z Fighters who would be unlikely to use the Dragon Balls to deal with villains that they would easily deal with themselves, especially Goku and Vegeta's innate say in love for battle. While others like Piccolo and Gohan would probably recognize the danger of over-relying on the Dragon Balls to kill villains they could easily handle on their own. And additionally, the said villains could simply acquire the Dragon Balls themselves to prevent them being used against them and or use the Earth's Dragon Balls to acquire immortality, as Garlic Jr. did. The Eternal Dragon will grant the first wish uttered after it was called by whomever is present. However, during the episode Eternal Dragon Resurrected, a notable exception to this rule was displayed. The dragon has discretion to change a wish at the last minute, provided the original wisher consents to the change. First, Bulma asked the dragon to revive all of their friends who were killed by Piccolo. Oolong then clarified that the friends he wanted to revive were Krillin, Master Roshi, and Chiaotzu. Shenron was about to grant this wish, but at the last minute, Yamcha interjected and requested that all of Piccolo's victims, not just their friends, be revived as well. And Shenron read the faces of Bulma and Oolong, realizing that they liked this change, and agreed to make the change. The Dragon Balls were rendered in it three times. The first time was after King Piccolo murdered Shenron, shortly after the latter granted him his wish and was subsequently revived by Kami after Goku proved to him that there were still some good people in the world. And the second time was after Kami ended up indirectly killed by Nappa when Piccolo took Nappa's attack net for Gohan, although they were restored upon Kami's revival. And they were then rendered inert for a final time when Piccolo and Kami decided to reunite due to Cell's grave threat to the world. Goku and the other Z Fighters initially did not consider restoring the Dragon Balls, but after Cell wiped out the entirety of the Royal Armed Forces when they were attempted to attack Cell during the 10-day wait before the Cell Games, 
Goku decided to find a means to restore the Dragon Balls, even if Kami could not defuse from Piccolo. When Dende became the Earth's guardian, he modified the burnt-out Dragon Balls created by Kami, giving Shenron the power to grant three wishes. He simply chose modifying Kami's Dragon Balls over creating a new set because the time it would take to create a new set from scratch was far too long especially given the intimate threat of Cell. And in addition to this, Dende's dragon can grant one wish and then have the other wishes saved for a later time. And it was shown in the Boo Saga, when one wish was made to revive all of those killed by Majin Vegeta, and then Goku asked Shenron to save those following wishes. And therefore, only four or so months after Kid Boo's defeat, another wish was made to erase the Earthling's memories of Boo. And one obstacle that Dende could not overcome for the new set of balls is that a person cannot be revived more than once. And however, in Dragon Ball GT, Shenron is able to revive Krillin, who had been previously revived by Shenron, indicating that this limitation has been removed, or it was due to the special nature of the wish itself, which was granted by Shenron as a final wish after the defeat of the Shadow Dragons. Like the Namekian Dragon Balls, the summoner must utter a set of words. In Dragon Ball Z, these words were Eternal Dragon by your name, I summon you for Shenron! In Dragon Ball JT, right before the Shadow Dragon Saga, the words have changed to Arise Shenron! However, it is unclear whether Dragon Balls can revive artificial life or not. While Android 17 was revived in its, during the Cell Game Saga, he started out as a human and was made into an android by Dr. Jero. Android 16, who was killed by Cell, was not seen again in the series and even after the wish was made to revive all of Cell's victims. However, in Dragon Ball Fighters, it is implied that Shenron was apparently unable to revive Android 16, who was revived by Android 21 by uploading the original 16's memories into a new body, as his memory apparently survived the destruction of his original body. Shenron may have been able to revive Android 16 as his mind had survived the destruction of his original body. Thus, he was technically still alive due to his nature as a mechanical type android which presumably allows him to survive the destruction of his body as long as his original memories remain intact to allow them to be uploaded into a new body. And presumably this would have also been prevented his revival by Shenron in the main series as well. As it was first mentioned by Old Kai in Dragon Ball Z, whenever a wish is made using the Dragon Balls, an equal amount of negative energy is created alongside the beneficial wish granting energy. And to prevent this energy from causing problems, the Dragon Balls absorb this dark energy. The dark energy is stored in the Dragon Balls disperses for only uh, after a hundred years, and the Dragon Balls can only store a limited amount of it. After being used to make a wish, the Dragon Balls scatter across the planet, giving them time to dispel the dark energy harmlessly. And unfortunately, this countermeasure was proven near useless when Bulma invented the Dragon Radar, allowing the Z Fighters to easily find the Dragon Balls and summon Shenron many times. And eventually, during Dragon Ball GT, all seven Dragon Balls were filled to full capacity, causing them to crack. When these damaged Dragon Balls were used to summon Shenron to restore the Earth after Goku's battle with Super 17, the Dragon Balls released years worth of dark energy instead, which manifested into an evil black smoke Shenron, who in turn swallowed the Dragon Balls and spit lit into seven shadow dragons. And despite the fact that the seven shadow dragons were all created by individual wishes, not every wish made a spawn shadow dragon. And for example, none of the wishes made after the Cell games to revive Cell's victims and remove the bombs from the androids spawned a shadow dragon. And it is unknown what became of the negative energy of those wishes. And presumably the Namekian Dragon Balls and the Super Dragon Balls are capable of storing large amounts of negative energy generated by wishes, due to them being larger than the Earth's Dragon Balls. The wishes that were in Dragon Ball GT was when Emperor Pilaf accidentally wishes for Goku to be turned into a child, and it was granted by Ultimate Shenron. The second wish was when Baby Vegeta wished for a new planet plant to be created and located near Earth, completed with buildings and plants, and it was granted by the Ultimate Shenron. 
The third wish was a wish to restore the Earth after being destroyed by the side effects of using the Black Star Dragon Balls. And that was granted by Poranga. And the fourth wish was a wish to revive all the people who were killed during the Super 17 Saga and the Shadow Dragon Saga. And it was granted by Shenron. In addition, Shenron was able to revive people who had been wished back to life using the Earth Dragon Balls before because the wish was a special wish granted to Goku and the Z Fighters by Shenron without being summoned by the Dragon Balls before he parted from the Earth. Now we have gone over the cracked Dragon Balls. Next time on the Dragon Ball Marathon, we will talk about the villain of Dragon Ball, Omega Shenron! Don't worry everyone, episode 5 will come later about Omega. Part 5 will finally talk about Omega Shenron, the final villain of Dragon Ball. And about Part 6, who knows, you'll have to find out. With that said, if you appreciate the content that Natalie makes, be sure to super smash that like button. And comment below on your opinion and honest thoughts. Please, no trolls allowed. Anyway guys, before we wrap this up, let's get this to 50 likes. And it's a great way to help out this channel since YouTube's ad system is broken as hell. And be sure to follow Natalie on Instagram, Pikachu and Sonic222, and her DeviantArt, which is the same as her username. Anyway guys, that's all I have, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Please take care, and thank you all for watching the Lifelight Network, and we'll see you all on the flip side. Bye! <laughs>